Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Tourism workers receive their COVID-19 jab in a special clinic. The RSLPF continues to apply the law as several COVID-19 breaches are registered. And the Substance Abuse Advisory Secretariat speaks on the negative impact of alcohol consumption. The national vaccination program is intensifying with the setup of more vaccination sites in communities around the island. On Tuesday, 9th March 2021, tourism, another sector on the front line of the COVID-19 response, was targeted for immunization. A special clinic was held at the Finance Administrative Center for industry leaders to build trust within the sector. Jessie Leos tells us more. Moments after receiving her first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, hotelier and former Senator Berthia Paul implored hotel workers to follow suit in order to restore full confidence in the local tourism sector. Paul and dozens of other industry leaders participated in the latest televised immunization exercise aimed at spurring further acceptance of the vaccine. A lot of the English visitors coming to the island and the American visitors are all taking the vaccines and they'd feel a lot more comfortable knowing they come into an island and a hotel where they'll be staying where the team members have all been vaccinated. I know there's a lot, a lot of information, probably too much information out there, but I want to tell the staff members that I think it's important that they all agree and take the vaccine because I think it's going to encourage visitors to come to St. Lucia and more importantly to come to their hotels knowing they will be safe and they will be able to have a wonderful vacation. The St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association confirms that globally consumer preference is shifting toward destinations that implement the highest safety and security measures against the virus. Chief Executive Officer Nurani Aziz, also receiving his first dose live on air, says sector leaders are coming to understand the benefits of being an immunized destination. Having the vaccine, having our team members inoculated, not only provides safety for us, but also lends itself to a level of consumer confidence in coming to the destination and, and, and availing themselves of what it is we have to offer. So from an economic standpoint, there's no doubt that it does have value in terms of our competitive positioning. Mm -hmm. But more important than that is the health and safety of ourselves and our loved ones by availing ourselves of the vaccine and, and being inoculated. Donna Lynn Vite, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, marked the significance of the vaccination exercise following months of displacement in the sector caused by the pandemic. We have the boat operators, the taxi drivers, those persons from the cruise industry, the accommodation sector. We have the vendors. We, I mean, you name it. We have all facets within the tourism industry. And the purpose here this morning is to represent each sector and have each person come and sort of motivate and give their own personal testimony because we're really hearing from even those who got inoculated this morning that they too had their perceptions but once they were able to get the information and bona fide information that that has changed their mind and they had today to get their vaccine and they could talk about it so it's really really a crowning moment for us in the tourism industry the National COVID-19 Vaccine Campaign Special Clinic for Tourism Industry Leaders was held on Tuesday, March 9th at the Finance Administrative Center in Point Seraphin, Castries. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. More than 6,000 St. Lucians have now received the AstraZeneca vaccine and that number is increasing daily. Health officials say rolling out the vaccination campaign with frontliners and leaders helped quell public apprehension about the vaccine. Here's Daniel Dubois. The government of St. Lucia has been leading by example with St. Lucia's COVID-19 vaccine rollout. As the Ministry of Health seeks to build confidence and trust in the process, the Prime Minister and Cabinet of Ministers have helped the effort. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney received his first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine on March 17, 2021, at a live event on the National Television Network, along with Minister of Health and Wellness Mary Isaac, Chief Medical Officer Sharon Belmar George, and Principal Nursing Officer Julieta Cassius. Local physicians, as well as members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, 
and the fire service also received the vaccine that day. Several ministers of cabinet have followed suit by receiving the vaccine in their communities, taking part in outreach activities and documenting the process. Um, so it's really, really good. I'm happy that I did. I came here um, in this facility where dozens of my constituents have actually shown up this morning and all through the course of today to be able to take theirs. So I'm very, very pleased with what I've seen and a lot of the elderly folks and people with underlying conditions have actually had the opportunity to be able to do so. So this is really good. It's a game changer in the COVID fight and it's absolutely fantastic. The response has been overwhelming. The reports we have received from other centers uh, today and all through the week have been uh, extremely phenomenal and that is just something that is going to be a great inspiration to our COVID fight. So it really is a, a great beginning. All those who organized the event today, I think they have demonstrated a passion and a willingness to assist in us in combating this COVID virus. Thank you again to all those who turned out in large numbers. Only two weeks into the rollout, over 6,000 St. Lucians have already received the vaccine, illustrating that confidence is growing as St. Lucia continues the path to herd immunity and managing the pandemic. Look, I'm very excited. Obviously, the, you can see the relationship that the health centers have with the communities. We've had um, almost 100 people, uh, and we have not even gotten into the, half, the afternoon as, uh, as yet. So the response has been very positive in taking the vaccine and the, the level of enthusiasm and certainly uh, everybody has commented on how great the nurses have been. So, uh, look, the war against COVID has begun. And for the first time, we really have something in which we now can be much more aggressive in dealing with COVID. And I'm really hoping that all solutions will follow suit of what we've seen today and coming out and, and becoming va vaccinated. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Danielle Dubois. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force, RSLPF, is urging members of the public to adhere to all COVID-19 protocols. Several breaches have been noted and measures are being taken by the RSLPF to curtail these breaches. From the 27th of December 2020 to the 4th of March 2021, a total of 123 breaches were recorded, with 108 warnings given, 15 individuals arrested and one conviction. Twelve home quarantine breaches were noted, with ten of these individuals being escorted by police to a government quarantine facility, and the other two individuals were escorted to a government facility after being cleared by medical professionals. Superintendent of Police Mashama Sili has a further breakdown. Minibus travel breaches, there were a total of 161, and 161 warnings were given. Individual protocol breaches, that is failing to wear a mask, there were 684 breaches, 79 individuals were arrested. Of the 79 individuals arrested, 30 so far have been convicted and fined from $200 to $500. And one person was given 40 hours community service. Of the 684 breaches, 605 individuals were warned, and these were in the areas of Grosile, Marigo, Ancillary, Canaries, Castries, Viewfort, and Babono. Three house parties were held last weekend, and complaints were lodged against two individuals who will be summoned to appear before the court. One individual was warned. There were no taxi or restaurant breaches. With regards to mass crowd breaches, there was a total of 15, one individual was arrested, and 14 warnings were given. Hotel breaches, there was a total of 10, nine individuals were warned, and one person was arrested. Curfew breaches, there was a total of 46, 29 individuals were arrested. Of the 29 arrested, five were convicted, and each person was fined $1,000. 17 warnings were given, and there are 24 matters pending. The areas where the curfew breaches took place were as follows. Viewfort, Mikud, Ancillary, Labry, Castries, Choiseul, 
Denry, and Babono. State quarantine breaches, there was one. The individual was escorted back to his room. That was Superintendent of Police Mashama Seely. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says recent public discourse on the suspension of liquor licenses as part of restrictions in the control of community spread of COVID-19 serve as a more urgent need for the ministry and the rest of the country to improve on educational programs and other support services to curb irresponsible consumption and abuse of alcohol. The Ministry's Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat says alcohol consumption is a growing national concern, especially among the youth and people within the productive sector. Coordinator Sharmin Hippolyte Emanuel says alcohol consumption as a psychoactive substance is considered a norm and a part of social gatherings. However, alcohol consumption in St. Lucia is chronically high. In the World Health Organization 2014 report, St. Lucia and Grenada recorded the highest alcohol per capita consumption in the Americas among both men and women. While the rest of the Americas recorded 8 liters, Grenada and St. Lucia recorded 12.5 and 10.4 liters respectively. The 2018 St. Lucia National Drug Report indicated that alcohol is the drug often used and warrants treatment at a 45.45% while marijuana being the second, 43.64%. The abuse and misuse of alcohol has negative impacts on the health of the population among both males and females, including, but not limited to, liver cirrhosis, motor vehicular accidents and injuries, cancer, mental and neurological disorders, and fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. Mrs. Hippolyte Emmanuel says people seem to think that alcohol takes away their stresses and makes them happy. While many may see the use and misuse of alcohol as a social activity, it is crucial to note its impact on individuals, families and communities. It is important to note too that alcohol or any other substance for that matter should not be used as a means to solve challenges or address problems. The abuse and misuse of alcohol are likely to create more challenges, including domestic violence, child abuse and maltreatment, poor mental health, a weakened immune system, and other financial implications. While alcohol is seen as a means of earning an income or livelihood, License holders must take responsibility for their engagements as per the stipulations from a business point of view. Similarly, consumers must adhere to the stipulated laws, likewise exercise responsibility with their alcohol intake. Mrs. Hippolyte Emmanuel reminds that alcohol does not solve problems. It weakens the immune system, placing increased burdens of disease and injury on the body. The Replast OECS pilot plastic recycling project is keeping up steam with other communities taking cue from Grosely. Jesse Leos reports. The Grosely Constituency Council has earned commendations from Grosely Parliamentary Representative Honorable Leonard Montoot for the Council's effective mobilization in leading off with community-operated replast collection points in St. Lucia. On Saturday, February 27th, when the Grosely Constituency successfully mobilized its second plastic collection operation under the Replast OECS Pilot Plasting Recycling Project, Minister Montoot was one of the several visitors to Collection Point. First of all, as a Grosselian, as parliamentary representative for Grosselian, I'm indeed proud of the Grosselian community having taken the lead in this uh, exercise here. I'm hoping that we will, you know, set the pace and serve as a model for other communities because it is very important that as a country we recognize, you know, the detrimental negative effects of, you know, littering, especially when it comes to plastics. Honorable Montoot expressed the hope that other constituency councils will follow Groselet's lead and participate in upscaling community-organized plastic collection and divert plastic waste from the environment. And at the same time, 
you know, and um, an accessory kind of benefit, to, so to speak, is the economic value for some who will be part of this this exercise will be bringing in their plastics and getting some return. And if I speak here now as Minister of Local Government, I would like to see other communities, the constituency councils in those communities, take the lead in encouraging their communities to participate in a program like this. While at the collection point, the minister availed himself of the opportunity to observe the various aspects of the operation and register with the program for a Replast Rewards card. A total of 961 pounds of PET and HDPE plastic from beverage containers alone was generated from last Saturday's RCP operation next to the Aquatic Center at Rodney Bay. This brings the total number collected after two days of collection to 1,900. 36 pounds of plastic collected. The Grosselé Constituency Council will be operating three replast collection points in total. A Moshi and Grand Riviere collection point is expected to open this month. A cohort of 35 trained volunteers so far are supporting the Constituency Council in this effort. The Labry Development Foundation was next in line to commence their collection. That activity was held at the Foundation's premises at Citrus Grove on Saturday, March 6, 2021. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leonce reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson will be NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tar, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government of the CGIS, and Television National PIA NTN, Capacito Nouvelle a Creole, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. Representative and Kai Palema, for Paris Gozili, Honorable Leonard Montout, and also recently, qui a projet pour redévelopper du Valawad Ville Gozili, qui a commencé tout de suite. Projet de développement de la qui a été ressuscité et renforcé la belle de Valawa Villa et pour tirer une occasion pour que nous faire plus de progrès. La première phase du projet est pour établir une facilité pour que visiter pour une petite promenade et poser. L'initiative est, selon un nouveau monde, qui a encouragé pour l'année plus d'activités commerciales, ça veut dire plus de monde qui a ouvert des business. La deuxième phase est pour vivre au Angers et grandir à sous Chia pour faire possible pour petit bateau et pour yacht et l'autre bateau à coste. Représentatif Montout a annoncé aussi plan pour un projet côté Yokai établi une facilité pour le public là, semblé pour ni diverses activités à façade sud Pigeon Point. Facilité publique ça là, qui est encouragé pour la famille ni ti activité yo même, la qui ni aussi yon place pour tes enfants à mes écoles tout. Ama initiative là, qui maï et projet des affaires touristiques, en Gozile, qui est principalement pour les venir et les en public en ville, pour bâtir des facilités publiques et pour improuver les grands beltés devant ces cas résidents de bord de la ville de Gozile. En bas, le projet est là, les individus qui ont des business, ça c'est pour des business, ils ont trouvé soulagement à ce taxe, ils ont payé et ils ont un support administratif pour être capable pour établir des business nouveaux, par exemple, Kabawe, Westerwan. Maison, des chambres à dormir, a parmi plusieurs autres activités de business. À l'année 2019, cette ci a facilité des projets, des assessements pour te déterminer des degrés de faiblesse, des égalités qui ont existé parmi les hommes et les femmes en pays là. Et aussi pour te savoir quelle quantité de progrès qui a fait à la direction de ça. L'initiative là, 
car sweep reg national qui gouvernement a implémenté pour effectivement adresser égalité femme et homme à cette ci Ce ministre qui n'a pas responsabilité pour juger situation qui a concerné femme et homme à cette ci là c'est honorable Dr Gail Rigobot qui fait déclaration ça là à ce dit une discussion à sur télévision NTN lundi qui passé pour une observance journée internationale des femmes qui la terre a observé tous les 8 à mois de mars. Assessment ça là selon docteur Rigobot c'est pour découvrir des graves violences qui a existé en parmi femmes et hommes en PIA. Ça aussi qui a été clarté à ces différentes situations qui a affecté égalité entre femmes et hommes. Par exemple, l'âge, employment, mariage, éducation, pauvreté, monde qui est déshabillé et préférence à la vie sexuelle. Pour ce ça là, le programme qui a commencé à cette ci le 26 février 2021. Le ministre Rigobot a vu que l'assessement a découvert des faiblesses et aussi des forces qui ont existé avec des degrés d'assistance qui forment des normes qui ont souffert de la situation d'abusement et de violence domestique ni brisée. Le programme a aussi pour divers supports et soulagements pour les individus à faire cela. On a vu parler des recommandations des législations qui ont adressé principalement la violence domestique violence domestique les établir à quelque site et qui touché à l'eau situation des violences domestiques pour particulier justice qui est égale ou yo qui j'a souffert et l'autre qui ca souffert à la violence domestique ministre on sait qui plus de yo sans servir public j'ai reçu un traitement et qu'à présent bien capable pour analyser situation ça là plusieurs l'autre t'ai aussi trouvé étonné pour adresser diverses l'autre situation qui ni pour faire et puis les individus qui en bas ces conditions ça là le ministre Rigobert a expliqué que tout ça, c'est pour protéger et assurer que tout ministère, ministère gouvernement est bien capable pour effectivement adresser tout à fait qui ne peut faire plus violence domestique et égalité à parmi les femmes et les à cette Le ministère de la Santé a continué le programme national de la vaccine présentement. Toutes les deux phases là qui ont continué en diverses communes, qui ni les travailleurs qui en haut oui, mon qui a souffert puis mauvais maladie avec les plus grands citoyens pour recevoir la vaccine là. Depuis vendredi passé pour le présent, a eu plus de 2800 mon qui a reçu la vaccine pour maladie corona. Depuis le programme a commencé le 17 février 2021, en total a eu de 9000 et chaque mon j'ai reçu la j'ai trouvé vacciné pour comme ça là après coup tout le on cette ici et première phase là en finissement c'est maintenant qui passe tu un resource center gozile avec l'école secondaire à Marigo ces citoyens étaient contents pour trouver pour réduire la vaccine là yo croit qui est très nécessaire pour particulier yo qui en haut et qui a souffert puis mauvais maladie qu'au cancer puis ça dou battement chair à parmi l'autre il aussi qu'à quoi c'est meilleure manière pour protéger la famille et l'autre monde qui en public là. Lundi passé, pour qu'on ait visité Wellness Center Cicero, Cicero, devant aussi devant la cour de l'hôpital souffrir et faciliter le sport à la vigie. Mardi, il était à Wellness Center à Belleville à Vieux-Fort avec Darren Sammy Cricket Stadium aussi à Constituency Council, ça c'est à la vie chose à Denry et Wellness Center à Aslawi. La tenue spéciale service pour les travailleurs au ministère des Affaires touristiques et ça a été pris en cette administration financière en point de sa fin mardi le 9e mois de mars 2021. Avant de finir, je vais faire ça côté pour le programme de la mercredi, ça c'est le 10 mars, il y a un cas de ville à Castui, ça c'est un town hall, il y a aussi l'école première à Denry, il y a aussi une facilité de sport à la Vigie et un uh, wellness center itan. J'ai dit, les 11, il y a un human resource center un uh, entrepôt et aussi un uh, multiple center à Miku et un uh, Darren Sami Cricket Stadium. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trois uh, nouvelles amis, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder, pour vous donner l'invitation, pour vous donner l'invitation. Si vous conservez la vie, vous avez présenté une autre nouvelle à Kouyol. À présent, vous avez présenté au Genel. Merci à Pil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.